Well, Jeff Moriarty really is our internet guy, our social media guy here in the newsroom, and I got a feeling you can take what seems like a really complicated topic and make it easy for us. Net neutrality, what is it, and why should we care? Well, I will try to break it down because this is, an, this is a complicated topic, but it's an incredibly important one. Okay. So net neutrality gets to the very basic heart of the internet where you can open up a browser and go to any site you want, mm -hmm. and they're all treated exactly the same. All right. And it's something we almost take for granted. Sure. That's what the whole internet was built on. Right. And what a lot of the big carriers are doing, like Cox and, and the, the cable providers. Comcast is one of the big ones in exactly. this case. Exactly. Yeah. They're saying, you know what? Some of these sites like Netflix and Hulu, they're taking up a lot of bandwidth. Sure. So we want them to pony up. Okay. We want to pay a little bit more. So if you want to go and watch a movie on Netflix, right. we're going to slow you down okay. and you're going to get a slower experience mm -hmm. until Netflix starts paying up. They're right. holding you hostage for more money. Which is going to come across to us if we're watching Netflix either as slow you down or slow you down because the buffering <laughs> is, the, I mean, we're already dealing with that, right? right? Yep. But it seems like it could get worse. If they are able to do that, well, a could, lot worse. It could get it much, much worse. And it's already happened. Mm -hmm. um, one of the carriers actually has started doing that. I believe it was Comcast. Mm -hmm. Started uh, slowing down Netflix speeds. Okay. And Netflix counteracted that. So you would actually see a pop-up and say, Netflix is slowing your speed down. And Netflix published a report to fight back mm -hmm. and said, here's a report. Here's the speed on Cox and all these other providers and Verizon. And mm -hmm. here's Comcast, slower than all the others. Right. So they're already up there trying to, you know, mm -hmm. slow those things down, and only Comcast customers were uh, um, suffering. Right. But it goes further than that. Okay. So if a provider can censor which sites that you go to, full on censoring or slowing down? Full on censoring. Okay. Uh, Verizon got in trouble for this. Okay. They decided that there were um, messages coming from, I believe it was. Uh, 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 abortion sites or an abortion clinic related site and they okay. decided this was a controversial topic okay. that fell into their um, like sensitive topic area right. and restricted those things from going forth on the internet. So they were effectively shutting those things down. Okay. If you were a Verizon customer, you could not access that data because they decided they could control it. That's the very basic nature of the internet though, is that there is no censorship, right? Exactly. Will this change this now that net neutrality's gone in? Well, so that's well. So net neutrality is is keeping everything neutral. Okay. Net neutrality is what we what I want. Right. Because that keeps it so you can go to any site you want, watch whatever you want, right. and the carriers cannot stop you. But if the government's getting into the business of regulating the internet because they already regulate television, why couldn't they start to nibble along the edges of that? Well, and that's what a lot of the carriers argue. Yeah. They say we don't want governments getting involved in this and meddling and, and everything else. Okay. But, uh, you know, when, when big businesses argue, a lot of small people start getting suspicious. Okay. So by treating the Internet providers as a carrier, mm -hmm. as a common carrier, then there's certain limitations to what they can do to, uh, uh, to restrict uh, trade or communications or anything that they're, right. they're, uh, they're offering. Right. So an, an analogy that I like is... Um, Let's say you're ordering something from Amazon. Okay. Right. And you're getting that shipped second day on FedEx. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And but, been there. But but yeah. It could, I, be, I, could be UPS. But I, okay. anyway, okay. I love my I love my Amazon, right? <laughs> but uh, UPS uh -huh. says, you know what? Those packages are taking up too much space on our trucks. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have space for anything else. So even though you paid for second day, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna take four days to get your package to you. We're going to slow it down unless Amazon pays us more money. Okay. And they can't do that because they're considered a care, a, I think it's a common carrier like the U.S. Postal Service or things like that. They have these agreements and the way that they have to do business, they can't arbitrarily mm -hmm. slow these packages down based on the person who's sending it or the contents of the package or anything else. Okay. Now that's a great analogy. You provided another one beforehand, before we uh, set out to talk about this, which I thought was excellent, which is you're driving down a highway and you're going to perhaps pull in and do some shopping. Give us that analogy, because I think that one really hits home too. Well, so I've been on the internet a long time, mm -hmm. and watching it grow, one of the things I loved about it is people could just come up with a website, start a business, 
you know, any idea they had yeah. and set up shop and make a, a huge profit, right? Okay. Or, or offer something cool or start right. a new website. Right. And you could get to any of these sites very easily. Mm -hmm. Now, with if net neutrality goes away, what that's saying is these carriers can basically, you know, section these areas off and say, you know what, you can't come into my area and shop, mm -hmm. right, unless you pay an extra fee to get in here. Mm -hmm. Or if you live inside this particular area and you want to go somewhere else, you found something over there that you like, okay. we're going to make it a lot more expensive for you to get over there. Right. So now, instead of this open economy where you can go anywhere and look at anything, right. it all turns into these little kingdoms where you uh, it's a lot more difficult, a lot harder, a lot slower to go between them. Yeah. I saw an interview that Mark Cuban did that fascinated me. And he said, okay, so this really began as a fight between Netflix and Comcast. And you can see both sides of this because... Here's Comcast saying, hold on, Netflix, you're becoming so popular and you're using up so much of our space, it really is making it, it's slowing everything down. On the other hand, you've got Netflix saying, look at what we're offering to people because you guys, the cable companies, are charging too much. So there's that argument. But you can see through that argument to this point, which is that's today's fight. Cuban says, what if years from now, I think he said maybe 10 years from now, we're fully into things like the Google car, the Apple car, whatever, and Google's got the GPS uh, coordinates going so that it can drive your car around, and all of a sudden, there's buffering. Because it's slowing you down, because we took what was a great thing, which was the internet with no controls on it, and we, the government, started to manage the controls and so suddenly now there's not enough space for Google to drive your car. What do you say to that? Well, I don't know. I think that the letting everything sort itself out, technology finds a way. Okay. I mean, it always has. So the right. internet started from dial-up modems and speed increases and, and movies came online right. and people started getting faster and faster connections and, and the infrastructure started building and building. It will find a way and adapt. And if you start controlling that, if you start squeezing it down, right. and you have businesses trying to eke out every every dime on the on the grid, mm -hmm. on those roadways, okay. I think that's where you're going to have the problem. So is, is your take that it's not so much that the government wants to control all aspects of the Internet, but they want to continue to ensure a somewhat level playing field? Is that what you're saying? That's what net neutrality is, is okay. that level playing field. Okay. Right? What's right. on the internet is a whole different discussion. Right. But you can get anywhere that you want to go. Right. The interest that you have might be different from the interest that I have, mm -hmm. different, from every, different interest from everybody in this newsroom. Right. But whatever they want to see and find, they can get there mm -hmm. exactly the same. That's net neutrality. Then let me just ask you the counterbalance to Mark Cuban's argument, which is, hold on. We're doing just fine without the government ever getting involved. This has been the Wild West as long as the Internet's been there. Well, don't. Once you get the government involved, you just cannot roll that clock back, and you don't know ultimately where it's going to lead. So the, the counter argument I'd give to that is net neutrality is pretty much what we've had since the Internet started. Okay. It just hasn't been official. It's been the way things have been maintained. It's been the way things have been understood to work. Mm -hmm. It's been a gentleman's agreement. Okay. And now you've got people breaking that agreement. Mm -hmm. So people are pushing the FCC to come in and say, look, we need this put into law. Okay. Codify what we've had up until now All right. so that things don't change. It's worked until now. Okay. Netflix, uh, Amazon, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Fox News. I mean, all of these, any site mm -hmm. that you would go to online would not exist if net neutrality hadn't existed from the beginning of the internet. Perhaps the new YouTube channel, the new, new Fox 10 <laughs> News Now YouTube channel. YouTube itself would not have existed. We wouldn't have had that bandwidth. Right. You know, it's, it's the pressure of technology that forces the carriers to move forward. When the iPhone came to AT&T, mm -hmm. right, that was the only carrier that yeah, uh, you could buy I remember on. that, sure. AT&T struggled. They hadn't upgraded their network in years. Okay. Right? And you had trouble um, making calls. If you were in a popular area right. or there was a tech convention, sure. good luck. Good luck at a basketball game. Right. <laughs> Right. Now they, yeah. they've invested money, they've built their speeds up, and now it's not a problem anymore. Okay. So you need to let technology pull t uh, the companies forward like that. All right. Jeff, really fascinating stuff. We can Always keep going for a while. Oh, yes, we yeah. can. Actually, a little bit of chemistry here. 
<laughs> we'll have to do this again. Okay, anyway, thanks for the insight. We'll see where this goes.